Hello, this is the last video for the third part of the project where I'm going to describe um, how do you do, how can you do end-to-end um, -end testing using Cypress. Okay, Cypress is a framework that allows you to do end-to-end -end testing. So by end-to-end -end testing means that you are testing the real system through the interface. So you are simulating the way you interact with the user interface. Okay. And uh, to do the tests, it's necessary that you launch the server and you launch the front end, okay? So you have the documentation here to read. And in particular, I think important that uh, you read the best practices to know what is the best practices of uh, using this tool, okay? So that you use it correctly, okay? And um, I have here, sorry, I have here the... Um, Okay, the quiz is tutor, but now I'm going to show you how can we uh, how can we start this. So we have the I've already launched the server, I've launched the um, the front end, and now I'm going to launch uh, Cypress. So you need to install it. Either you just download the the last version of our code, and uh, then it's in the package already. So we don't need to install it, but as you, uh, as you run uh, npm install, it gets installed. Or if you don't do it, just uh, install Cypress, and then you run this command, npx Cypress open, and you, it starts executing, okay? So again, maybe it's gonna take a while, so just wait that uh, it finishes executing, okay? But maybe I can tell you something that uh, is relevant. So. These tests, these end-to-end -end tests, break quite easily because the interface, the interface changes a lot. So if the interface changes a lot, it's really important that when you refer which elements of the interface you are going to use, basically try to find the elements that are more stable. And I'm, I want to tell you which are the elements that are more stable. By more stable, it means that they are not going to change if you, for instance, change the CSS. Okay, or if you change the way the, the page is presented with the HTML tags. So probably you, you should focus on things that if they change, actually probably are changing the semantics of the interface. And in that case, it's natural that you're gonna uh, change the, the tests, okay? So it's launched, okay? It's launched uh, and now uh, I'm going to start so I wrote only this uh, test, it contains three tests, okay? And when I double click, what happens is going to, to launch Chrome and the tests run from Chrome, okay? So this is Chrome and it's going to start executing the tests using Chrome, okay? So you have these, so which tests, and you're going to observe here the tests running, okay? Which tests I've done? The first one is just, um, Login as the demo admin, okay? So I'm visiting the page. Look, is executing the instructions there. I'm visiting the page. Then I log in. Then I go to the administration. I go to the list of managed courses and I click on new course. Then I fill the form, okay? I save and I, I, I check when I save that there's a new course there. And then I just delete it. So I'm gonna delete it. Look, I'm deleting it there and I finish, I log out. Then for the second test, I'm doing um, more or less the same thing. The only difference is that I try to create the course execution twice so, so that I, I see an error in the second one, okay? And then I just delete the first one that was created. So I'm creating the first one successfully, okay? So yes, and now I'm, I'm trying to create a new one. And you'll see the, the, the error message there, right? And I just click on the closed error message and now I'm deleting it, okay? And the third test, what I'm doing is the, the other functionality, which actually is a create, but it's create from a, an existing course execution. So basically I'm doing the same, but now I'm clicking around here on this, right? I'm gonna click there and I'm gonna open the dialog. And now look, this is already filled, okay? So I, I just do a save, 
it's the same. And then I delete it. So I create a demo course, okay, from Technico, and I just delete it. Okay, that's it. Uh, another interesting thing is that you can come here, okay, and you can basically see each one of the steps with the mouse look. You see what's happening here, right? So you see each one of the steps and that you are doing a look here. What, what you see here, if you look, type, look at type, you see that I'm typing it there, right? So before and after, it's showing before and after typing what, what's occurring, okay? So you can see these and you can just see, and you can do even check something like, uh, so I'm checking, uh, the uh, some values what is interesting here you don't need to do a lot of checks because for instance if you try to assess an element and see let's see if this element is in the page and if it is not the test failed so you don't need to assert that the element is not there so it's simplified so most of this is just go click on the page insert data and uh, okay sometimes you may check something okay good so let's see the code so the code to this is here, okay. And the first thing I've done here is basically in the um, Cypress JSON, I've defined the base URL that's going going to be to use. So when I visit the page, I, I do an URL. I don't need to 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 give the URL anymore because it's what is defined here. So I can test. Uh, I can change where is the the site I'm testing. Okay. So then let's go to the manage courses. And so this is my test, okay? And I have a before and an after each. So what I'm gonna do before each, I do the login and after each, I just log out, okay? Let's go for the login first. This allows me to define some um, Cypress commands and this is a Cypress command. So where are the Cypress commands in the comments file? So I open the comments file and let's see what is the demo login, okay? The demo login is here, okay? And what I'm doing there, so the first thing is I just visit the page, so I'm assessing the page. Now it's enough to have the slash there because in the configuration I have defined what is the, um, so here I have, I have defined what is the site, Okay, and then I'm gonna do what? I'm gonna get an element that has this attribute. And this is the first thing. So I'm getting an element that has this attribute. This looks strange because this has attribute that didn't exist previously in the code. So this is because of the, this, this reason that you don't want your code to easily break with changes in the user interface. So they, you define this data, see why? Okay, and attribute, and then you can just assess it. Let, let, let's see where is it in the code. So this is in the home view. Okay, in the home view, the first thing you're gonna do is basically this. Do you see this admin button? So this is our button, okay, which is this button. Look, if I go there, this button is this one and I need to click there, right? So to click there, I need to assess this. Actually, I could try to use the button itself. So I could, in, instead of doing this, I could say, well, let's get that button, which is a bit more difficult because there are several buttons, then I need to identify which button, okay? It, uh, sorry, is there. Um, I need to identify which button it takes is more difficult, and at the same time, is not so stable because I may decide that it's not a button anymore. And if I, if he's, he's going to change the interface, if they keep this attribute, the code, this test doesn't, uh, does not break. Okay. So that's one uh, thing. Now what I've done then, I just click there and then what I do next, basically I click on an illustration. This is the other technique. So instead of using the attribute, I use some string that is in the page and is not transformed. You will 
notice that there is a problem with this approach is that you are using Vue and a lot of the HTML that appears in the page and the CSS is generated. So when you try to refer to things that you see in the view code, they actually do not exist. And this sometimes is a problem, okay? So this string will always exist because it's the string you, where you say administration. Where is this string? I think that is in the top bar. So look, administration, okay? So I could try to do it this way, okay? But actually I've done it this way. And actually I try it first this way, but the problem is that this is generated and you say that the, the element is not visible because actually generate something else. So after trying, I decide to use this, okay? So what do I get? I get this element and I don't care what type of HTML element is uh, around it or what uh, CSS element is around it, okay? Okay, so, and then I do the same to manage courses, okay? And the manage courses are here in the toolbar, in the toolbar, in the top bar as well, okay? So let, let, me, let you see that. So after I log in, I just come here and I click there to open and then there, okay? And then I, I, I'm in this situation, okay? So what I do next, this is the login phase, okay? So I finish my login and I come here. Uh, I come here, okay? And I start my test. I can just tell that the logout is pretty simple. It just contains and clicks on logout. And this works because logout is there, okay? But let's see now what I've done. So the first test, I create another command that is create course execution and I give it, it, it uh, these arguments, okay? What is create course execution? Well, I, I go to the commands part and create course execution is, I need to go to the create button and do a click. So I use the same, the attribute. So create button and do a click, okay? And then, these are already referring to what? To these elements here. And look, I just add attributes for each one of the fields. And now I use this type. What is type? Type the value that is there. So, and it types the, these values there, okay? And at the end, what I'm gonna do, I want to create. So again, I define a new attribute, save button, and I do a click. Save and I do a click, okay? So that's what happens here, good? What I do next in my test, then I delete the course, okay? I delete the course, so what happens? What happens is that um, after that it creates a new course there and I want to delete it. This is a bit more difficult because now I need to identify which row in that table I, I want to, because look, there will be several delete buttons here and I need to identify which one for the correct row. So basically, what I do here is a new command and is delete course execution. So what I'm gonna do, I just try to find this acronym, okay? So I find the row that has the acronym test A03, okay? And using this acronym, what do I get? This is the funny part or interesting. I get a element in the row, not the row itself. So I go to the parent, I go to the parent, and I just do a, do a check that, okay, it's a single parent, it's a single element, this, okay. And then I go to the children and I get the list of children. What is the list of children? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have seven children here, and I do a Evelyn seven just to check it, okay? And from the, the children, I'm gonna find the one that has the lead course. So I get that thing. And as soon as I get it, I just click it, and it passes. Good? So that was the, 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 the first test. So in the second test, I'm reusing code. Look, I'm reusing this code, okay? I add a log because now I want just to, 
to write something that appears in the log so that I can uh, read what's happening if it's necessary. And I create the second one. But now when I create the second one, the dialog is, is being kept open. It's going to appear this error message on top on red, okay, in red. And so I, I, I define a new command called close error message. This is, was a bit more tricky, the, the close error message. Why? Because I could not actually assess it with the... So the first thing I just find, it has the error name. Good. Okay, so it's error name and I identify it. Then I try to find the, the parent and I try to, next to the button, write this. But the problem, it is this is a dialog and we used... Let me show you what we used in, um, in terms of... Um, uh, let me show you, because this is, this is really interesting. Uh, when we have the error message, if you look at the error message, look, the error message is a lot of beautify code that you do not see. You don't see the button here. So it's very difficult because it's, it's another component and you cannot, this is a library. So you cannot go, go and put the, the this dismissible means that there's the, the place where you click, but you don't see the button. So how, how can you do it? I know that there's a button there. And then I write code that is, uh, breaks much easier, right? So how do I write? Well, I find the button. It's the button that is there. But uh, if we change it, then it's going to break. But Let's say that, okay, this is, uh, this is Beautify. Okay, the code depends on the Beautify library. If the Beautify library changes, we need to change this, this part of the test. Okay, and then I click it. So, and that's the, the second um, part. Okay, and then what I need to do next, I need to close the dialog because I just closed the, the error message, but the dialog is open. I close the dialog. Okay. So the cancel button, and then I delete, okay? And the third test is pretty simple. I just define a new create course execution. And the difference here is that, look, the difference is create from course execution. I do the same, I get, I threw the name and the difference I just use this, okay? And then I fill that and I save it. Okay, I think it's, uh, it's nice to do these tests. Uh, I think it's something that uh, we will have fun learning and using. Okay, and um, and okay, good uh, good learn and good work. Thank you.